Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing Friedman's ANOVA to one-way repeated measures ANOVA in SPSS. So Friedman's ANOVA is the non-parametric equivalent to a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. So we would use the statistic when we have not adequately met the assumptions for a one-way repeated measures ANOVA and therefore do not have confidence interpreting the results of a repeated measures ANOVA. So taking a look at these fictitious data, have loaded in the data view in SPSS, I have an ID variable and then I have three tests. I have a pretest, post-test, and a post-test administered three months later. And this would not be an uncommon structure for a repeated measures experiment. So let's assume that we have a treatment that we're using to try to reduce anxiety symptoms. And these are all measures of anxiety, the same instrument, the same measurement used across all the different administrations here. And we want to see if there's a reduction in anxiety symptoms from pretest to post-test, from pretest to the post-test three months after the initial post-test, and if there's any differences between the post-test and the post-test administered three months after. You will notice in this example that we do not have any between subjects factors, meaning all the participants here receive this treatment to reduce anxiety. There is no control group in this experiment there's just the treatment group. So first I'm going to perform a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. Go to Analyze, and then General Linear Model and Repeated Measures. And we can see this is what the dialog looks like by default. To start with, we need to define the within the subject factor name. In this case, I'm just going to refer to it as time, because we have the pretest, the post-test, and then the post-test three months after. And those represent three levels, three, and then add, so time three. Uh, then I'm going to click Define, and this brings up the next dialog, which is labeled Repeated Measures. And you can see you have the within subjects variables, time. So the first would be pretest, the next post-test, and then post-test three months. And again, we have no between subjects factors. If we did, uh, we would put them here in this list box. And we have no covariates. If we did, of course, we put them here in the covariates list box. Under plots, I'm going to add for the horizontal axis time. And then under post hoc, there'll be nothing. We'll just leave that as default. There's, there's no factor to move over for that. For save, I'm going to make no changes. And under Options, for Time, I am going to compare main effects. I'm going to use a Bolferoni correction for the confidence interval adjustment. So I'm going to select Bolferoni from the three available options there. And I also want descriptive statistics and estimates of effect size. Click Continue, and then OK. So we can see here we have the within subjects factors listed, pretest, post-test, and post-test three months. Uh, we have descriptive statistics. We can see the mean, 53.6 uh, for pretest, and then over 45 for the post-test, and 44.7 uh, here for the post-test three months. So not much of a difference between post-test and post-test three months, uh, but there is uh, a difference noticeable here between the pretest and the post-test and the pretest and the post-test three months. Looking at multivariate tests, even going with the conservative place trace, we still have a statistically significant result. Then moving down to Mockley's test of sphericity. And you can see from the this test, here's where we could make the case for using Friedman's ANOVA in this instance instead of the uh, parametric one-way repeated measures ANOVA because we have a statistically significant result. If we're evaluating Mockley's test at 0.05 alpha, that is the alpha value being set at 
we have violated the assumption of sphericity. Now it is not uncommon when violating the assumption of sphericity to move forward with a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. But I wanted to show you this because this could be a justification for going with a non-parametric alternative like the Friedman's ANOVA. So next we're going to move down to the pairwise comparisons uh, here in this bottom table. And we can see we have 1, 2, and 3 listed for time. So this would be the 1 would be the pretest, 2 would be the post-test, and 3 would be the post-test 3 months. And you can see that the adjustment made here is the Bonferroni adjustment, which we indicated. And there is a statistically significant difference between the pretest and the post-test, as indicated here, and between the pretest and the post-test three months. But there is not a statistically significant difference between the post-test and the post-test three months. 0.991 is greater than 0 0.05. So we have a non-statistically significant finding there. These findings should not be surprising based on the mean values for these three measures. Uh, as you might remember before, the mean here, 53.6, a bit higher than 45, and 44.7, of course, fairly close to the 45.3. So we would expect that we'd have no statistically significant difference between the post-test and the post-test three months from looking at this table, but we need to confirm it looking here at the pairwise comparisons. And moving down to the profile plots, we can see a fairly high score again for pretest, and it drops, and it drops just a little more at post test three months. So, based on violating the assumption of sphericity, we're going to go ahead and run the Friedman's ANOVA, the non parametric equivalent to the one way repeated measures ANOVA. So, we'll go to analyze, non parametric tests legacy dialogues, and for Friedman's ANOVA, we're going to look here for K-related samples. You see test for several related samples, and by default, Friedman is checked off. And here we'll move in the three variables of interest. And then under statistics, we'll just add descriptives, and click continue, and then OK. So here are the results for Friedman's ANOVA. Of course, right above that, the results from the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And we can see the mean values are the same, but Friedman's ANOVA also gives us the mean rank. Again, we see 2.71 here for pretest, a distance away from the post-test, and then the post-test three months is not too far away from the value, the mean rank for the post-test. And in this case, we have statistical significance here, 0 0.000, which we would write up as less than 0 0.001. But that is statistically significant with the alpha being set at 0 0.05. So we know where the difference exists because we interpret the results from the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. So we know there's a, t a statistically significant difference between pretest and post-test and pretest and post-test three months, but not between post-test and post-test three months. But how can we determine that staying with the non-parametric test? So we run Friedman's ANOVA, and this is the output we have, but we need to run a follow-up test to see where the differences are in these three different variables. So to do that, we'll go back to the data editor. We could also run it here from the output view. And we'll go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, now two related samples. So before, for Friedman's ANOVA, we selected K-related samples. Now we're selecting two related samples. And you can see this is what the dialog looks like by default, two related samples tests. And the test type that's checked off by default is the Wilcoxon Sign Rank Test. And that's what we want to use here. Now, one convenient feature of this dialog is we can load all three of the comparisons in at the same time. So we have pretest, we want to compare that to post-test, and then pretest, 
compare that to post test three months and then the post test and the post test three months so we can load them all at the same time all three pairs under options I'm just going to add descriptives click continue and then click OK and here are the results from the Wilcoxon signed ranks test and you can see that it compares the post test pre test post test three months pre test post test three months post test just as we indicated but it does it based on ranks you can see the negative ranks positive ranks and ties for each of these three comparisons and if you look at the superscript here for example uh, with this one negative ranks 34 and the superscript is D if we look down to D you can see uh, that's post test three months less than pre test if we look down here at positive ranks in this last row at 16 the superscript H you see that's post test three months greater than post test so it explains what it's referring to by negative ranks positive ranks and of course ties then moving down to test statistics we're given a p-value for each of the three comparisons that we loaded into the Wilcoxon sign ranks test dialog and again not surprisingly we have a statistically significant difference between pretest and post-test pretest and post-test three months we have a non statistically significant finding between the post-test and the post-test three months I hope you found this comparison of the one-way repeated measures ANOVA and the Friedman's ANOVA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.